So in other words, you will do the wall before you take care of building one. You'll look at the whole thing. Yes. At least we're going to look at the, the situation with the building and the wall, that we don't do something with the wall and then have excavators come in and ruin the wall that we put in. Yes, so, so your, you your question is very similar to Keith's. That was a great idea that you the, brought up. The, the, the issue is, are we jumping the gun here a little bit and go. coming up with a partial solution on building one building. that we may have to back up and right. pay, pay money and potentially damage the work? Yes. We, I won't let that happen, okay? There you go. All right. I, I was asked. I was asked three months ago to look at building one. I'm going as fast as I can. Uh, you know, these 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 issues are complicated and they take a little bit of thought and some work. So there's a few more things I want to do before I, you know, publicize what what I what my my complete thoughts on it are. Right. So to answer your question. Are we jumping the gun? Eh, maybe a little bit. Jerry's got a follow-up question and a comment. He says. Five feet into the ground doesn't sound very deep to hold back the building ground. How deep is the creek? Beyond that, the steel type backs and all hardware should be galvanized. Yeah, it, 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 I said steel. It, it, they'll, be, they'll most likely be galvanized. It looks like the, the creek stabilizes out at about minus five. The building elevation itself looks like it's up about seven total differential of 12 feet. Providing the support is is the structural strength of the vinyl. So that's actually an interesting engineering question. But where, where we're getting the pressure is by the distance away from the building and the strength of the vinyl with, with the anchor blocks and tie backs. That's where the strength to provide the back pressure of the building is coming from. Now, the more the merrier on embedment depth, that's, that could become a uh, economic issue. Truthfully, if, if we can get two or three more feet of embedment for very little money, then I think uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to investigate that, so that is a good question. Nancy, 10 to a three. Um, I think we're skirting around it a little bit, but is there the potential that this work will negatively affect, to use your words, the questionable foundation of building? I can't fathom any way that it would hurt anything. And you're estimating at 200 to 250% of the quote for the riprap, so are we looking potentially at 170 to 192.5? Yeah, I kind of wish that I wouldn't get pinned down to a number, which I haven't really finished the design, nor it's got, gone out to bid. Because I, I like to make adjustments if, if like the, the lady on Zoom just asked, five feet doesn't sound like much embedment. Could give us options where we, we put that down deeper and went, went further out on the shore. All it did was take, would, all it did was take money, right? Bucks, there you uh, go. What does hey. vinyl look like? What color is it? How strong is it? I know nothing. Shore Guard, S H O R E G U A R D. Public information on the web. It'll tell you everything you want to know. The question was Is the building on a footer or on a slab? The, the geotechnical report says that it's on a, on a slab. Basically, the gentleman's position is let's do this, uh, do a complete and full job, and not try to shortcut it by throwing an inadequate amount of money. Is there a place where we can see a similar job? Oh yeah, sure. Just let me go through my records. Memory banks here. Uh, it shouldn't have to go very far. I'll be happy to provide that those a sample and, and a location. What we're talking about here is basically erosion. This is going to be a long discussion and there's going to be a lot of work done before it gets done. But five feet, that's not going to work. Erosion is from the bottom up. We're losing our shoreline from the bottom up. The, the, the tides move in and out. We get king tides. We get a lot of rain. You get washout. The rocks fall down into the creek. You have to be below, my opinion, you have to be below mean low tide. Okay. So let me rephrase what already stated, and that is that I'm, I'm asked to come up with a solution that's reasonable and economical. I'm not going to argue with somebody that wants to take and put a, say, a 20 foot 950 sheet pile in at 500 percent of the cost. I mean, you know, what, what do you want to say? No, don't do that. It's not going to work. Of course it'll work better. So uh, it, it's always a balancing act of getting a good solution for the proper amount of money. John Wagner asks, has an engineering design been provided for review or are we only discussing pursuing the development of an engineering design? I'm going to propose we engage this engineer to my right to do for us. Given us the preliminary design was for, for, a, for a proposal, it's not for a contract. The question is, why don't we do this restoration and check if it's safe? 
leave it alone for six, eight months. I'm going to exact, if it's sick, we'll do something. If it's not, it's already sunk. Let me see if I can accurately paraphrase. If a retaining structure is built, it's going to stop the building from settling, or it's not. Can we even tell whether the building is, is presently settling now? Okay, what, so that, that really is some of the complexity of what the condition of building one, or similarly stated, what's the soil under building one? How is it supporting it? How is it, is it working? Is it deforming? Is it staying the same? You know, pretty important, all important questions. Um, got lost on uh, the, re the retaining wall is really to have to two function. We're trying to get some beneficial enhancement or improvement of the stability of the soil for building one and slow down the erosion of the embankment. So there's a dual purpose of, a, of the upland retaining wall. Will a, a retaining wall stop uh, erosion in its tracks? Erosion is something that occurs over a very long period of time and that's primarily gonna, gonna happen at the water line. You know, as this gentleman over here said, you know, the erosion starts at the toe of the slope. He's, he's correct about that. So uh, I don't know if I'm answering your question or not. The question is, is if, it's, if it stops the building from sinking, you may not have to do step two. Okay, all right. So, all right, the upland retaining wall provides an adequate solution to stabilizing the building. Why would you want to go to other subsequent steps? The answer is you wouldn't. If, if it works, then you're done. Well, no, that'll be. Oh, I, I think it'll be longer than a year. You know, to make a long story short, we're trying to get the most rational solution for the, for the conditions here and not overreact to it. The motion was and seconded to, to cancel the contract for the riprap. We've had a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? It's unanimous. I'd like to entertain a motion to engage Roger to provide uh, drawings for the vinyl wall and various options that might be available if we want to go deeper, what the cost would be. Uh, draw the plans to uh, request proposals from contractors and uh, secure bids and supervise the job. That will be a contract that I've talked to him about. It will cost between four and $5,000 is what he wants. I'd like to entertain that motion to engage Roger to proceed. Kelly, second. Second by Tom. All in favor? All right. Oh, I got to have to discuss, 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 discuss. Penny King, 12, 2, 3. I might request that you amend the motion that you just made a second ago to the extent that we postpone or suspend the contract pending the outcome of the engineering study on one. The engineering study should have cores. It should have a look at the cracks inside the buildings, I think is the concern. It should also have level shot or if they're sinking, that we document it. Yeah. And then we know the depth of what needs to be done on one. And if it turns out that the engineering study that was done back in 2015, which basically, you know, was cores done. Building one seems to be unique in that it does have quite a few more cracks than the rest of us. We're not sure if that's my understanding was that the engineering study in 2015 did not determine that there was anything substantially structural at issue with that building. Decided at that point, based on earlier indications that what we had putting in an upland retaining wall would be an upgrade, not straight maintenance, that basically what we had was sand washing away from the building. It was losing a lot of uh, area back there. Putting in a proper, digging it out, putting the rocks in, stabilized that aspect of it. That would have stabilized that situation, would not address anything with the building. Before we get into canceling contracts that were studiously looked at and entered into, I would suggest that we suspend it. If you're gonna do a serious effort on building one, Let's find out what's going on with building one first. Then we can decide if we need a revetment, right. seawall, upland, whatever. Uh, okay, thank you, Tony. Uh, this is a shared concern. We may be getting out ahead with the upland retaining wall before completing the evaluation of what exactly is going on or not going on with building one. That's a that's a valid concern. Um, but I'm not gonna. We're, we're not gonna go out there and build an upland retaining wall if it's a not gonna provide the benefit 
in proportion to the cost, or B, some information becomes evident or discovered between now and the next couple of weeks, or maybe a month or so, that throws the whole concept of an upland retaining wall, makes it not viable for some reason. So tentatively involved with both issues. So I, I don't think that you stop your forward motion on addressing the embankment until the building one is complete. The two processes are going on in parallel. So I'm not, for some reason, the upland wall isn't viable, isn't gonna solve the problem. Then I'll be the first one to say don't do it. Simple as that. I think that's the assurance that Tony was looking for, that we're not gonna build something that's not necessary. If that wall, if that building, uh, the motion is second, all in favor to engage Roger, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, it passes. Thank you, Roger. Who's interested tomorrow night at 7.30 via Zoom, we are having a workshop to align the rules and regulations with the bylaws and the declaration. Um, that is available on the Google Calendar on the website. The link is there, and we're also happy to send that out. Um, John is going to be um, overseeing that. He's done a tremendous amount of work with other people um, looking at what needs to be aligned in those documents, which is going to save us a lot of money with the lawyer and some of it's as simple as wording telegraph is in there that's no longer applicable um, but that work is going to start um, tomorrow at 7 30. brought it up about having a uh, a sign to announce that you're violating our parking policies we can tow you away you can't tow someone away unless you put that sign up so issues here particularly back around the workshop area where people <laughs> are parking trailers uh, you're allowed to put a trailer in there for a short period of time you're not allowed to constantly do it so we got a motion on the floor to put up a sign and to engage a towing company they will put the sign up for free and then the idea is that uh, when we have a violation uh, we can inform the uh, violator that he's got a problem and take care of it and if he doesn't then we do have the enforcement capability of towing and you all in favor of engaging a towing company to put up a sign and say aye 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 all right opposed none okay so man. hi can everybody hear me with my lousy mask on okay linda creighton 10108 i've been asked to be the president of rio again my priori priority is to get a substation one ambulance one fire truck to the east of north dixie highway we had an incident here 2019 it took them 14 minutes to get here because fire rescue was stuck with the train at the railroad tracks and couldn't get to River Club. Um, I just need a little bit of help because I'm not very good at writing. If I can get somebody to write me a petition up, I'm sure the board would approve it and I will get all these signatures and bring it to my next meeting, Martin County meeting. This is all I can do. They, I, they seem like they're saying, I'm the only one complaining about this, so if you're concerned, that's what I would ask anybody to help me do. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the members of River Club that joined the Royal Civic Club. I appreciate it. Your money's going to good use, and we are trying our best to keep 707 Quaint little town. Wait for a positive answer. Question is related to the question. Uh, we should join. Claim a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn.